Hi guys. Up until recently, I've always used the 6 up data tool to update armor and the DayZ mod. That's pretty much all I used it for. I didn't actually use it to browse for servers. I used the in-game server browser, mostly because, well, I didn't really think this was much use, to be honest. It's just a big grid of stuff. Recently, however, um, I've discovered another tool, which is called DayZ Commander. A DayZ Commander you can access by going to daisycommander.com. You can download it on the download link here. You'll need .NET version 4 to run it. And in this guide, I'm going to take you through DayZ Commander, show you what it's about, how to tweak your settings, and how to find good servers, and pretty much wrap up by telling you why I think it's actually a better tool than 6up data. Okay, so if we start off by kicking off the Daisy Commander itself. It's fairly quick to load, as you can see. Let's just maximize that. Now straight off the bat, you'll notice this. Refreshing all servers, 4,500. There's a progress bar going along the top here. You can, in the settings, turn this off. I'll show you how. But what it's doing at the moment is going out onto the internet and literally rediscovering all of the servers that are available that are running DayZ. Now this can take a little bit of time depending on your network connection and some of the settings that you can you can set in here. You can turn it off to stop it from doing this if you don't want to and then you can just manually kick off this process. It's up to you. There is a, a quicker way I'll show you in a second of just refreshing the servers that it knows about but what this is doing right now is discovering all the possible servers. It's not something you have to always do. Now, let's start off by saying, well, how do you, how do you actually update uh, Operation Arrowhead and the DayZ mod? You'll notice this versions here is highlighted in yellow. And if I click that, it tells me that something is out of date. Normally, this would be green. DayZ Commander, as you can see, is, is up to date. Armor 2, it's telling me is out of date and needs updating. And the DayZ mod itself is also out of date. And it's shown me what the latest revision is. Now one of the things I find is quite useful about this particular one, the Armour 2 uh, version, is this, this piece of information. Because it's polled all the servers, it's actually telling me what percentage of servers are running which version. So I can use this, when a patch comes out, I can use this to make a decision about when to actually update my Armour 2 version. At the moment, you can see that 46% are running the 885 version, 20% on 417 and so on you can scroll down this list and this will guide you as to you know which version you actually want to update to. As for the DayZ mod, it does a similar thing here. Now the 172.5 has been out now for the best part of four or five days while I'm making this video. But straight away I can see that I really should update from 2.4 to 2.5 because the majority of servers have now moved over. But after a patch just comes out, you may want to just hold off before you do this because you, if you do upgrade, you might not be able to find a server to play on. Now when you're ready to install the latest patch, you literally just click on these links here and it will automatically update Armour 2 and DayZ. I won't do that now, but um, it will just do that for you. It's quite nice. Okay, let me just run you through some of the settings of DayZ Commander, which is here. Now. There are options here to, to use the GPU. I've not actually ticked that myself. Um, this is one option you, you might consider. Closing Daisy Commander after joining a server. That's purely personal preference. But what we're saying is, when you double click to launch a server, do you want Daisy Commander to shut down completely or just stick around in the background? Personally, I have it sticking around the background because when I want to hop servers, it's already fired up. If you're using Steam, you'll want to use these options here. Now, if you've got um, if you bought Armour 2 via Steam, you'll want to use Launch using Steam. If, as you know, you probably need to patch uh, Armour 2 to be on the beta version, you can either do that via Steam or you can have Daisy Commander replace the Armour 2 OA files with the beta version itself. It depends which way you want to go on this. The game directories, it automatically discovers. The max connections governs you know the, at the start when it's updating all the servers this is how many connections it uses to go and poll for all the servers if you increase that number 
uh, performance goes up, but it will obviously put a more of a strain on your internet connection. Finally, you've got some op this is the option I was talking about to whether or not to do that on startup, and this is a 24 hour time format. Again, pure preference to uh, whether you like 12 or 24 hour times. Now let's take a look at the actual server browser itself. Up here, we can filter by name. So for example, if we want to play on a UK server, we just type UK into here. If we want to play on a US, we can type US and so on. If we know we want to play on a UTC minus server, we can put that in and it'll automatically, as you can see, it's quite a quick filter. Um, so we can filter directly by name here, or if somebody gives you the server name and says, oh, I'm on UK333, you can just put in UK333 and it'll you'll see the server. In fact, I'll do it now. You'll see the server highlighted straight away. You just double click it and off you go. Now, the max ping, obviously, <laughs> anybody on the internet knows what this is, but you can literally slide the ping times up or down, depending on what you want. Obviously, anything under 100 ping is going to run better than 150. But 150 is still acceptable on armor. It's when you start getting above that up into the 200s, that's when you you know, you know get to the point where you might start seeing some lag. But, you know, as you can see, the, the results are actually updating automatically as I adjust that. The survivor count is um, is used if you want to, let's say you want to go, I don't you want to go sniping and you want to join a server that's got some players on it. So you want to slide this up and you say I want, you know, at least 20 players to be on that server. Well, Daisy Commander is now going to go, going to show you uh, the minimum count that you've set. So if we want to play on a very populated server, we might go all the way up to say 40. As you can see, we're down to just 13 servers that are matching our criteria. You may be wondering why some of these are gray and some of them are white. We'll cover that in a second, but for now, let's just put that back down to something reasonable. Options to hide empty and hide full servers. Normally I would hide empty. I wouldn't necessarily hide full because in my uh, experience, even though you've got a full server, if you double click to get in it, people come and go on servers all the time. And you, if literally, if you keep double clicking on the server, it might take you a minute or two to get into a full server, but you can still get in it. If you hide them, you won't see that at all. So it's personal preference, but personally, I don't run with that ticked. Now we're into this option here. Do you want to hide locked or unofficial servers? These are servers, as it says here, that are not connected to the central hive and therefore considered unofficial. You might consider it to be hacked servers, but what it means is they're disconnected from the hive, so when you join in, your loot will probably not come with you. Personally, I always run with that on, because I only want to play on official hive-connected servers. Hide unplayable servers is... You probably want to leave that on. It's, it's going to basically hide servers that are restarting, uh, so they're in the process of booting up. That, although that doesn't take a tremendous amount of time, there's not much point in, in having unplayable servers listed if you're just looking for a server to jump into. So you probably want that on. Now, hide the wrong Armour 2 version. Remember back here on the version count? This is the version we have and the latest version and so on. If we tick that, it's going to hide all the versions that don't match our version. So you can see down here, all of these now are 885 and 885 is what I'm currently running. So what that's saying is only show me servers that match my Armour 2 version. Possibly not something you want to have on. Wrong day Z version, however, you may want to have on. As you can see, these are 1.7.2.4. If I update to 1.725, then that will obviously only show me servers on 2.5. That's a useful thing to have on because you really want to be playing on a DayZ mod, uh, a DayZ server that matches your DayZ mod. But, you know, realistically, you should be looking at this to determine when to upgrade. So you should be always having that ticked and always playing on a mod that is generally got the most server count on it. That way you're going to get the most servers. But now we're coming to some of the more interesting um, options of DayZ Commander. With Daisy Commander, it act, what it does is actually processes this line here. This is the server information line. Now, there is actually a standard for this, 
which Daisy Commander uses. And I'll show you now. If you go to the Daisy Wiki, you'll see the current naming format is this. So all servers should, and I say should because they don't, start with Daisy. Then that should come the location ID, which is US, DE, UK, whatever the country code is basically. It should then be followed by the version number. It should then show the various options for uh, third person perspective, whether it's on or off. And then it should show the crosshairs, whether that's on or off. And then it will have the time zone and what the offset is on that time zone. Finally, it should then say who it's being hosted by. Now this is the standard, the naming standard for servers in DayZ, but not all of them follow that. I would suggest to you that you should play only on servers that do follow that standard, because it, it's kind of an indicator to me that that server's been run properly and legitimately. They're not trying to hide anything from you. As you can see, looking down this list, there's no crosshair information or 3D uh, third-person information on these servers. There is on this one. What Daisy's doing is it's processing this information here to help you to filter these things out. So what that means is, if I only want to play on day servers, I choose day. If I only want to play on night servers, I choose night. You notice it's picking up GMT plus two. Currently for me, because I'm in the GMT time zone, I can, can confirm that this is night at the moment. So this is correct. If I choose a day server, then you'll see that the offset is UTC plus 12, minus 6, minus 9, and so on. So these servers are running daylight hours. Or if you don't care, you can choose any time of day. So that's quite nice. Normally you want to leave that on day, unless of course you really want to play on night. But nighttime day Z, as you probably know, is a whole different ball game. Now, the way these filters work is grey means you don't really care, green means you definitely want that, and red means you definitely don't want that. So if I want to play on a server that has the third person option, I make that green. What that means is all these servers here have that option on and you can see that in the settings column here. These icons are directly relating to stuff going on your filters. So if I over, hover over that, you've got the third person. These are all third person servers. The next option along is tracer bullets. Then we've got name plates. I'll come to that in a second crosshairs and finally death messages now for me the important ones are the third person option the nameplates and the crosshairs nameplates in particular is important to me now the way daisy servers uh, operate there are actually four different types of daisy server uh, a recruit a regular a veteran and an expert now you very rarely see recruits so i'm not going to worry about that most people who start playing daisy will go for regular servers um, now, regular servers, perversely, are actually more likely to get you killed. The reason is because a regular server will actually show what's called the crosshairs or the nameplates. Sorry, it will show you the nameplates and the crosshairs, but the nameplate's the important one. If you scan your crosshair around um, the battlefield, if you like, or Chinaris, if there's anybody just sat in a bush, it will instantly pop their name up, even though you probably didn't see that player it will show that person's name and it will show the range to the target. For that reason, I do not like nameplates being on, which is why I play on veteran servers, because a veteran server has nameplates turned off or should at least have nameplates turned off. This is set by the server administrator. That's another reason why I recommend to you that you only play on uh, servers that follow the, name, the naming convention, because if they declare here that third person is on, and crosshairs are on and so on then you know chances are that when you get in the server that's exactly what you're going to get whereas if you play on a server that doesn't declare the information it's anybody's guess because it, the, the daisy servers don't actually communicate that information back to daisy commander daisy commander is literally processing this information that it's given if you have nameplates turned on you'll have a range to target now if you imagine a sniper's looking at you you're running across the field, he moves his crosshair over you, he instantly gets your name and range, dials in uh, his zeroing to the exact range of you, and pow, you're dead before you know it. If you play on a server that doesn't have nameplates, he's got to work out, using traditional methods, how far away you are. And most people don't know how to do that very well, so the chances are they'll miss you. 
that will give you a chance to escape, go prone, get behind some objects or whatever. So for that reason I recommend, and this is my recommendation, that you have nameplates off, so you have that on red. You will survive longer <laughs> in the long run, trust me. Crosshairs, um, doesn't really matter, that's the hip firing, whether you see the crosshair in the middle or not. And the death message is, is just a message whether, you know, when somebody dies it'll say such and such a body has died. Again, that's up to you. Same with tracers. The important ones to me are third person and nameplates. I, I have third person turned on and I have nameplates turned off most of the time. Uh, the reason being, not because, I mean a lot of purists will say, oh you shouldn't have third person turned on, but when I'm streaming or I'm recording footage, actually third person is quite useful, um, but it is also a bit of a hack in some respects because you can actually stand next to a fence or a wall and you can see over the top of it in third person mode and, and a purist quite rightly will say that's not the way the game should be played, it should be first person only. Certainly if you if you turn off third person and nameplates then you are entering the realms of uh, a veteran server, uh, sorry an expert server um, because that's what an expert setting should be is these things these things should be turned off. Okay so that's my settings that's what I run with uh, generally speaking. Down here you've got the uh, the date that the time of the servers currently running you've got the play account you can refresh a server individually here you can see the play accounts changing when I do that or you can refresh all of the servers in this list by clicking this icon up here and that will quickly refresh these servers that match your filters again this is not refreshing the entire server list it's only refreshing the servers that are matching my filters so generally speaking these are my settings and quite simply if you want to play you just double click on one of these servers and off you go Daisy Commander is, I think, a better tool in, the, in this than 6 updater because of all these sophisticating filtering options I can find servers quickly. If you do fight, play on a server and you decide you like it, then you can favorite it here. You can see I've just favorited LU313. If I go to my favorites, that's now been added. So if you find a server that you like, you can favorite it. You can bypass all the server filters then. You can just come straight here, see how many players are in there, double click, off you go. If you want to see what servers you've played, then just look through the recent tab. Friends is it's not actually that useful. It's not as, as sophisticating as it sounds. If you've got a friend and you know his name, you can put it in here. Uh, and when you load up the servers, it will actually process the players on those servers. And in here, it will then tell you which server that friend's on. You can double click and join it. Not very useful for me because I changed my name uh, in game all of the time to prevent stream sniping and so on uh, but if you've got a friend and you both have the same name uh, sorry if you both have a fixed name then you can just add a, your friend's name in here and that will help you to find each other a bit more quickly but it's not that useful because it will it will actually show you any name that matches so if I was to call myself squirrel and somebody put squirrel in here it's going to show you squirrel, squirrel nuts, dust squirrel nuts, squirrel one two three anything that matches so not terribly useful, I don't think, unless you've got a quite an obscure name and you agree that with your friend. But favourites is definitely useful, recent is good, and these server filters, um, I think, are really fantastic. If you like this tool, you can donate here. You can chuck some money in the guy's direction. This is actually a good tool. I love it. I think you'll love it too. Go and check it out. That's daisycommander.com. Hope you enjoyed this guide. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Take care, guys. See you soon.